I don't think this is going to age well. After three decades, we finally get another Ghostbusters movie with no others in between. This movie takes place 32 years after the second and only sequel, now we're dealing with the grandchildren of a Ghostbuster. The granddaughter of the least likely one, of course, Egon Spangler. This story begins after Egon gets ghosted, then his single daughter and her two children move into Egon's rickety shed in the middle of Oklahoma in the town of Somerville, which is suffering from constant earthquakes despite not being on a fault line like California. So now the kids have to figure out why the town shakes so constantly and learn how to use the equipment Egon left behind. Besides the usual, is this movie movie good question, there were two additional going into this film. Is the movie funny? Followed by are the ghosts scary? Let's start with the first. Yes, Ghostbusters 3 is actually funny. Many jokes, like Phoebe's puns, had me chuckling, or the Stay Puffed Men in specifically one blink and you'll miss it moment which had me rocking in my chair with laughter. More on the Stay Puffed Men later, moving on, the comedy is supported by good performances from most of the cast. Phoebe is the strongest performance in the film, being a bit of an underdog rising to the challenge with her own little quirks. Paul Rudd is... Well, Paul Rudd, you get what's on the box. Now Finn Wolfhard is probably the weakest across the board, with nothing really funny to add or interesting to say, although his evolution into Danny Sexbang is nearing completion. Something I find funny is all the cockthroats online decrying this film, because it isn't the abomination that never happened in 2016. This film isn't diverse at all. Yes it is, two girls, two boys, and one of each are minorities. Well, you're just a sexist. Actually, the lead of this film is Egon's granddaughter, giving the best performance in the film. Well, this movie won't stop pretending to be the original. I agree. Wait, what? Yes, I think there are so many references this film crosses the line from reference-heavy sequel to blatant rehashing of the original. We never thought you'd agree. This doesn't compute. Listen, before you think too hard and start smoking from the ears, there is such a thing as common ground. This is why you lose people, you fucky nut Cheerios. This is what Ghostbusters 3 gets critically wrong, and it drags down the film like a loan officer denying a gypsy. Just as you're starting to lull yourself on this comfy pillow of nostalgia, this movie sneaks in to smother you in your sleep like Mike Lindell was a shinobi. 37 years and the best anyone could come up with was Gozer? Again? Remember Zool? The Proton Pack, Ecto-1, Shandor, crossing the streams, and who could forget the fucking Crunch Bar rapper? Did Egon just keep that thing in his pocket for three decades? I mentioned the Stay Puft Men earlier, because in this film, we now have a bunch of tiny ones instead of a giant one. But what do they do? What is their purpose? They don't menace the town, they annoy Paul Rudd for a scene, but then just disappear until they're needed again at the climax. No one but the main cast sees them, which is another issue. The world is so empty. In a world where the Ghostbusters saved the world twice, with literal tons of evidence of the existence of a spirit world and the deities beyond our comprehension, the Ghostbusters were just forgotten. Even at the micro scale, you're telling me no one saw the Stay Puft Men? No security cameras? No witnesses? How about Zool? The whole reason Paul Rudd is even drawn in the direction of the Puft Men is when a woman screams. Which is also before the Puft Men come to life, so by process of elimination, she had to have seen Zool. So, where are the reports of the Hellhound? For that matter, there is almost no one on the road when the kids are trying to trap Muncher. No one else saw this flying grub eating everything in sight. I don't like that this review will be cut so short here, but I cannot express my views of this film in detail within five minutes. So, like Last Night in Soho and Mortal Kombat, I'm going to be doing an in-depth breakdown and comparison to fully express my thoughts about this film in the near future. So, please stay tuned for that coming out as well. In the meantime, I will say that Ghostbusters Afterlife is isn't as good as people think. In fact, I think it's borderline bad, like a low mid-tier kind of bad, and it's a perfect example of how easily we are tricked with enough key dangling. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then check out my review of the slog that was The Eternals at the link over there, and I'll see you in the next video.